Hello, welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.xyz. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. <laughs> uh, I'm Joseph Scrimshaw from Not Going to Spell My Entire Website. It's josephscrimshaw.com. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Welcome back, Joseph. I'm happy to be here, and it's amazing to see all your lovely shirts throughout the week. Uh, <laughs> this is still the same Jedi robe. I have not hmm. changed. Hmm. When you run it Do through the think... sonic uh, cleaner thing, whatever, the what's, what's the, don't they have some kind of uh, high-tech something to clean clothes in Star Wars? Haven't we come across that? I'm, I'm sure they have a sonic agitator, yeah. Yeah. I like the idea that uh, that the Jedi do not use machinery. That like that's one of the things that the younglings have to use uh, is it's this deep meditation to use the Force mm. to pull out every bit of dirt from your clothing. <laughs> Can the Force oh, remove guess, yeah. stains? I, if you break it down particle by particle, I right? Guess so, right? <clears throat> yeah. If you 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 really reach out in the Force and you feel that spaghetti that's sauce. Right. Yeah. Feel between. Between you and the rock, or you, or me, and this thing, or you, or the stain, and your genes. <laughs> right. <laughs> the crotch of your pants in spaghetti sauce. <laughs> the tension, do you feel it? <laughs> Need it by Friday, I do. <laughs> Movie night it is. <laughs> um, so here we are, talking about Minute 64. Minute 64 of Solo, A Star Wars Party. Minute 64 starts with the Millennium Falcon taking off, about mm. to uh, heading off on its way to make the Kessel Run. And uh, it ends with L3 telling Lando he's going to have to do that thing again later. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> that thing you do. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. Tom Hanks. <laughs> Chiropractic. Um, yeah, the, uh, so we've been pointing out where these little, uh, we've been pointing out, we've been understanding, and we've been appreciating. <laughs> so that's what I should have done. A one, two, like, point, count, handshake. Mm. Should analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate. Um, there you go. The, uh, but we, we've been pointing out where these kind of breaks would be, that if this were a uh, TV show, where would these, mm. where would the episodes, if there was roughly a half hour or so, we've had a mm -hmm. break for each one. And this would be a perfect one in that they're they're done with this. They got the thing. The episode would end, uh, like with with the the end of yesterday's minute essentially being, you know, them taking off and seeing that there's a tracking device on it. Boom! A little bit of a cliffhanger. New yeah. episode. You start out in the Falcon. So every half hour well, or so, what? Yeah. What? Well, I was gonna say you would have to allow for to cut back to Billy D. Williams being like, boy, I sure don't know how I'm going to get out of this one. <laughs> but you folks will be back next week. I hope. Uh, you know. Yes, the reading of the Calrissian Chronicles. I definitely want that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Is the framework of the Lando show. Is somebody finding this this ancient podcast this guy recorded about himself by himself? Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. That's a good cliffhanger. See, this is, to me, the adventure serial vibe of Solo. Yeah. Is it, it keeps mm. giving you this little cliffhanger and throwing you off into the next adventure. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, I think it was the first one went up to uh, the end of the, was the when Coaxium they were going to see Yeah. Mm. And then, um, am I doing too many of these or am I doing like, yeah, and this ends with the, I'm trying to remember where they were, where we were cutting them off each time. But yeah, it, it's, it's, I feel like we've gotten a good 20, 30 minute chunk out of each of these. So. Uh, oh, yeah, right, because so the first one was before the, the Coaxium heist. Because the thing with the beast and all that, and then where they, they, they go with them. So it was minute um, 26 or so. Did it cut off at the shower? Was that the cliffhanger? Will the Han and Chewie get through the shower? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, so there's another good breaking point right here for, for the episode. This would be a new end of episode, start a new episode here. Yeah. Um, and it starts out with, with Han being impressed with the walking around inside the Falcon's cockpit and being impressed and, and awed and, and kind of um, enamored with, with what he's seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And when you say breaking point, 
I love this minute, but this is a minute that is a, another uh, breaking point, uh, right? <laughs> uh, uh, for for people's opinion on this interaction, that when uh, Han and Lando have the bad dad club here, right? Yeah. Now, um, yeah. I, let me recuse myself by saying I had completely forgotten that this conversation was in the movie until <laughs> we started talking. We still, I, we started breaking it down minute by minute for this, and I'm putting up the schedule, and I'm just like, huh, I don't remember them having that conversation. Oh well. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah I mean, it's um, well, as we've probably teased a bit uh, during the week, uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of this bit of the well, I, to say I'm not a fan of it seems weird because to me, it just seems like it's almost like a relic of two different scripts that were mm. mashed together because it seems like like they go out of their way for him to be like, I don't have a tribe. I don't have a family. And then to have him just casually offhand mention, oh, yeah, my dad did this. Like, it's it's strange. Yeah. It's, oh, wow. Okay. Like it's, uh, it's w- like it just raises questions about like what? Yeah, to, uh, to what? me that's that's one of the reasons that I love it is, um, y- you know, there's a, a lot of people, yourself included, don't mm-hmm. want the the laundry list of here's how Han Solo became Han Solo and have all the mystique go away. Mm-hmm. And one yeah. of the things that I liked about the film is we learn how he he be, st- went from this kind of um, orphan late teens young man into yeah. the kind of the the roguish adventurer that that we know but that his actual youth it, we're not getting into the day-to-day of it and to me this is one of the things that tells that story of mm-hmm. clearly he had a father he had a mm-hmm. father who was ground down by the system mm-hmm. everything that's implied by this line is we come from a factory planet that takes pride in what we make but the empire has ground us down to the point where we don't get to fly what we make anymore. And in fact, we get laid off and rejected. And our planet is in poverty. Mm-hmm. So I love all that stuff. And then Han has the dares to dream like, this is mine. This is of my culture. This is of my lineage. I deserve it. I, I deserve it to use it what it's for, to go out there and explore. But with the, the parent thing in particular is, I love the way this connects to it. I don't have a tribe. I ended up an orphan. So clearly something went wrong with my, my father. I, in fact dislike my father so much he disappointed me so badly i won't even use his name Hmm. like to me this is the kind of writing that i want more of where like okay but if these two facts sound like they disagree then there's a story there and let's trust the audience to fill in the gaps right Uh and i totally understand if you're like that's bs (laughs) but i just wanted to share where i was coming from yeah no no i totally i i it makes sense to me. And I guess on some level, I'm like, I'm, um, uh, you know, I guess from a storytelling perspective, simplifying does can also be you know, like dumbing down. Like you said, having this, having contradictory things implies a story and that's a kind of cool thing, but it, it um, so yeah, I could see how, um, me saying, well, they shouldn't have it. It should be one or the other. He should be either proud of his dad or he should be, oh, I don't have a tribe. Um, but I can see how that's also like, you know, going the more like conventional screenplay route of like, oh, you don't want that is something that's just going to confuse people, take it out, <laughs> that kind of a thing. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, like- it's one of those agree to disagree type situations. Um, so I do like, like my no prize answer was that his father was so poor, they had to sell their last name, which is why he doesn't have a last <laughs> oh, name anymore. Right. They had to sell it to someone else. Uh, Tarkin was his original last oh, name. Look at and that. They're like, oh, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, um, I just kind of like the story that, like, when Han was young, maybe he kind of looked up to his dad who made these cool ships and he's been on one. Like, his dad took him at some point to mm-hmm. the factory and showed him around. And his dad was like, hey, kid, I'm going to be somebody. I want to be a pilot someday. And then something goes wrong where he gets laid off. I think it's the the boot of the Empire impoverishing right. people. Uh, and then his dad in in... It makes such a mess of his life that Han Solo becomes a like, you're not my father teen. And I would rather be on the streets than be your kid or his dad. I mean, I think part of it, too, for me is like I get real excited about it. And then as I'm talking about it, like I'm describing incredibly sad things I wouldn't want to hear in the movie. Like, right, yeah. Hans, but like Han Solo takes it one step farther. Like, yeah, he got laid off. He always wanted to be a pilot. But uh, then he got laid off and uh my mom left us all and he drank, he drank himself to death. Uh, yeah. and I was on the streets anyway. Like I kind of feel like that's, what's being implied. Uh, and I, but I'm happy to have <clears throat> not literally heard it or know it and, and, and be able to imagine it. 
Well, I've got good news and bad news for everybody. <laughs> um, if we if we had done this podcast at any other point in history, I wouldn't have more to add here. But uh, in March of 2022, a new comic book series called Han Solo and Chewbacca started coming out. The first issue um, has Han, Chewie, and Greedo being sent on a mission to Corellia by Han by Jabba the Hutt. This is before, you know, obviously pre Star Wars. Um, and uh, <laughs> awkward if it isn't. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, he's just got Greedo's the smoking got, hole in him. He's got the mod gut, right? Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> see that now. There's the story. I'm gonna write. Um, yeah, That's a steal. But uh, they're they're doing a they're doing a job for Jabba, and uh, um, in doing so, Han kind of grabs a badge and pretends to be part of this corporation because they have to break into a vault or something. And when he's sneaking around inside, I think then after he goes, they they stop at a bar and he starts talking to a guy and the guy, uh, they, they, they both start to realize, wait a minute, are you, you're from Corellia, what? And it turns out it's his dad. So Han Solo meets his dad and has a drink with him in uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca, number one from mm. Marvel Comics. Well, I will reserve judgment <clears throat> until I read it, but yeah. I think the comics... Uh, in every once in a while, a detail from the books, but more the comics. Those are my tipping point where I sometimes feel feel like you, <laughs> where it feels like I don't need that detail. The, yeah. the comics do a lot of that, so uh, I'm I will read Han Solo in the in the sad dad reunion <laughs> and see how I and feel about it. But I really like just the implied in the movie. Let me tell you that um, his dad's name is Ovan Ovan O V A N Ovan Ovan. Just which Ovan? Made, that, the, which, uh, my, my immediate follow-up was, why do they call him Ovan when you oven in the cold food and uh, out hot eat the food? But that's a whole different thing. <laughs> I think Ovan is the way it comes out when you try to say old man, but you've had a few. Yeah. yeah Ovan, really look at me, my old life. Man. Yeah. Let's say in, uh, in Wookiees. That's how, huh? that's how Chewbacca said it. And that's how right. they... Uh, hey, isn't that girl, Van? Like, <laughs> I have two follow-up questions to yes. this. Now, to this bear in mind, revelation. I have not read this comic book. I just read the description of it. I think you also have to be careful because sometimes they play with you too because there's that whole thing where everybody lost their minds that uh, Han Solo had an ex-wife. And yes. it turned out that was not actually the story. So Right. Yeah. Well, the question, my two questions are, do, and specifically it's a comic, so do they draw Han Solo looking like, do they trace fi photos of Harrison Ford, or do they trace photos of Alden Ehrenreich? Um, <laughs> I haven't read it yet. So I and can't second of all, does his father look like Sean Connery? Oh, that would be good. <laughs> <clears throat> that was, I mean, those are my two uh, questions. I'll just put myself into the, if I was making this comic, yes. Yeah. In yes, real I, world? I don't know. I would draw him exactly as Sean Connery appeared in The Last Crusade with the tweed hat and everything. Totally. <laughs> Just to really mess with people. A little undone Ovan. bow tie. Ovan. We it called the like, dog yeah. Ovan. Yeah. <laughs> or no, yeah, he'd be something like, we called the dog Solo. Yeah, we oh. called the dog Solo. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what people need more, is, is more focus on the name. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I think um, it comes off kind of like the, you know, the, in, uh, is it is it Infinity War or Endgame where like you know Iron Man goes back in time and ends up talking to his dad? Second one, whatever yeah. the second one is. <clears throat> Endgame, right. yeah. Endgame, Endgame. So I think it's a scene that plays out kind of like that. Okay, but well, okay. I'll give There's it a no read. Time travel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll go. I if if I had more time, I just just discovered that before uh, recording. So if I had more time, I would have gone to the comic store and tried to get it so I could show you guys. But it would be interesting. Uh, I'm not a. <laughs> It would be interesting to see Han Solo's dad, um, especially given the light of we see Kylo Ren's or Ben Solo's relationship with his, obviously, very troubled relationship with his dad. <laughs> right. So it would be interesting to see if Han Solo's dad would basically be like a older version of Han Solo, like a loser guy who's just gone from one cruddy. Like if Han Solo had never joined the rebellion, basically, he's just kind of like a drifter who's, you know, scraping by and he'd have a, like an alien. Um, you know, co-pilot and stuff. So yeah, uh, I mean, that's what anyway. I, I I like that idea. Hopefully, that's what's in the comic. Uh, I'll find out yeah. eventually. But that's what <laughs> I just so like about this scene of this. Like, so much of yeah. this is like, I'm not going to be a loser like my dad who wanted to fly one of these but never right. did. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm he's he's the opposite Jimmy Stewart. He's really going to leave Bedford Falls. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, I also want to point out, of course, that uh, in one of the, was it the lead bracket draft? The that bracket Han Solo's draft. father was a subplot of the original Empire Strikes Back. Mm, uh, stepfather. Thing, so. Ste- well, that's kind of insulting that you have that no, you I'm, feel like you need to make that distinction. I'm adding, so. I'm adding uh, context there. It was well, the stepfather yeah. that that he yeah. that he was bristling against his. He was like, "Oh, like me and the admiral yeah. don't get along," kind of a thing with the. Does anyone get along with their father in Star Wars? Eventually, <laughs> uh, right now, Grogu and Din are rocking it. Uh, his yeah, adoptive, but father again, not yeah. not as yeah, not as not as father. It's more like an Obi Wan no. kind of mentor yeah. kind of. Yeah, so uh, I do anyway, not want to see a cut of Force Awakens where uh, Kylo is saying, "I will have, I will complete what you have started, grandfather," and it cuts to just a sad guy in a bar who looks like Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's his grandfather on that side. <laughs> oh no! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Uh oh! <laughs> no, hang on a second. Breaking oh, news! Get, getting an update. General Franco is still dead. Yeah. No, wait, 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 because the. In the, I'm looking at here the the bracket draft. Mm-mm. Mm. There's a clone of Han Solo's father. Mm. Yeah, no. he had the bracket the two draft, A's and father. The that double A father. The stepfather father. in question from the bracket draft is named Ovan Marikel. Huh. So Ovan oh. Oven, Ovan Ovan Marikel is the the. So this is bringing bracket draft material possibly into continuity i like that han solo had multiple fathers and they all disappointed him in different ways so whatever <laughs> headcanon you have yeah. about how a father has disappointed han they're whichever possibly multiverse, all true <laughs> whichever multiverse <laughs> you're in han solo is just father is disappointing him in it that's just for in sure. different ways <laughs> yeah well I, so if, if ovan is this is amazing uh star wars uh, uh archiving right here uh, archivist work um if if Ovan in the comic is a stepfather, I like that better. I, I don't, I just, yeah, I'm good with not meeting his biological dad. Um, oh, and here they've added, but I feel like this has been, has this been updated since I looked it up? Because now here's a little picture of Ovan. Um, and he does look a little bit like Han, like, like Sean Connery, maybe. All right. Except with like an eye patch, kind of. So um, like he looks like George Lazenby. <laughs> Little, with an eye patch, <laughs> with an eye patch, and like a like an Obi Wan hair kind of a situation. All right, mm. um, which Obi Wan? Like Attack of the Clones Obi Wan hair or uh, Alec Guinness Obi Wan hair? Hmm. One of this is I, I uh, Alec Guinness Obi Wan hair, but I'm <laughs> uh, there. Inconsistencies abound, and and this is still a, it's a breaking story here because that's um um uh. The, there's the in the legends continuity it was Joe Nash Solo who was his father and then there's some things from that that seem to be in Ultimate Star Wars in 2019 they say that Hung was orphaned at a young age indirectly indicating that his father had died but then in the novelization they, they say that Oven had abandoned Han and in Han and Chewbacca number one he shows up and he's still alive so there's a lot of things going on here. Look, Han mm. is like the Joker and he just tells different origin stories for his dad. That could be. Yeah, I think it's very well. Turns out he lived a cushy, a cushy life. <laughs> um, now I do want to add that uh, the, in addition to the the bracket draft, one other thing that's being referenced here, um, the was the the Han and Lando talking about their parents. This is from the John Kasdan of Forty Two Things You Didn't Know About Solo, a Star Wars story. Mm. Um. The scene where Han and Lando discuss their parents was in part inspired by Bruce Springsteen's autobiography, Born to Run. Um, since <laughs> Ow, so many characters in Star Wars that. <laughs> are orphans or the product of some great tragedy, we wanted the uh, story of Han's parentage to hint at something more complex and less romantic. This is kind of what Joseph was talking about. His father led a working class life full of disappointment and had a complicated, difficult relationship with his son. Han eventually ran away from that relationship. And I like to think that Han's father was still out there somewhere drinking himself to death. Oh, boom. You called it. There you go. There's Ovan. Mm-hmm. If he dies in the comic, uh, that all will the circle will be complete. There you go. Um, but yeah, I do like that. I do like in this in this scene that Han and Lando they do have a lot in common, and I like um, 
I like that brief bit of bond of like, uh, did you have a good relationship with your dad? No, do you? No. Right. Mom's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Which just, it, it works for Lando and all of his real deference to, yeah. and, you know, uh, being like, the the sort of a renaissance fair version of chivalry always of like right, hello yeah. ladies uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it tracks well with uh with lando but i like that i like it i did the the whole fatherhood thing is so baked into star wars that an right. idea of parenting and mentoring and that you need someone there for you is so yeah. baked into it that i like their brief like you have a good dad nope you nope awesome all right <laughs> see you at the meeting <laughs> well, I, we have a great opportunity right in front of us then, because we talked about wanting to do this Cheers reunion. Why don't we have George Went play his, and have him meet oh. him in a bar? And then it's like, there you go. Totally, you know, work it all in. Oh, I would love mm. George Went to be Ovan. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> George Went doing a Sean Connery voice. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So Lando's mom. Signed Lando's mother. <laughs> um, Has it going on? Yeah, I came up with three names for her. Landa, Landy, and Lando. L a n d e a u x. Oh, I thought you were going to say like, like, like doe, French. like doe, like a like a Indeed. female deer. Do. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, hopefully we'll get to uh, find some stories about Land. We so seldom hear about mothers in Star Wars. It's yeah. it's, yeah. it's kind of refreshing to hear someone actually refer to uh, them. Do other I, than um, hmm. other than than Padme and Leia's other dead stepmother, do we we never hear about mothers <laughs> yeah, in this? Brea. Uh, in the books this, have been a little bit better about like there's some great stuff about Brea Organa in, in yeah. a couple of the books. And, yeah, yeah, but yeah, we definitely need some solid screen time with some space moms. Mike. Do we know what Luke's uh, what Luke th- like? We know Luke is curious about how his father died, but do we know what Luke? What did he grow up thinking his mother's story was? I wonder. Yeah, maybe no, we'll find would... out. Obi Wan, Obi Wan will be like, "Oh, your mm. mother." <laughs> what did you say would... to me? <laughs> I would love that. Your or if they're gonna know. keep doing, uh, keep doing uh, CGI, Luke. Uh, you know, yeah, mm. I, I want to hear him talk about Padme. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I... <laughs> yeah. My uncle <laughs> says she stuff. was a prostitute on the moons of Diego. <laughs> like they totally bad mouth her and do bad things about her. <clears throat> oh, I she really... killed your father. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from a certain point of view, of course. <laughs> I bet that they, I bet there's just a vibe with Owen. Like, Baru, I'm sure, would told him cool things, but there's a vibe with Owen that Owen's probably not a big fan of politics. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she is a politician and it did not work out. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now I could see a liberal libertarian bent in Uncle Owen. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I take care of my farm, like, my yeah. neighbor's farm, yeah. and nothing else my problem. <laughs> he does not my like My father ran this farm with one leg. One leg he had. <laughs> um, I, I will say that uh, um, Wikipedia is uh, is almost like congressionally unhelpful <laughs> in that it's... <laughs> the entry is Landonis Balthazar Calrissian's mother. <clears throat> the fe- this female individual was the mother of Landonis Balthazar Calrissian. <laughs> Calrissian considered her to be the most amazing woman he had ever known. Calrissian owned an Orodium ring with his mother's name inscribed on it, mm. which I think comes from the says? guide, the visual guide, perhaps. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it. Behind the scenes, she was first mentioned in Star in the 2018 Star Wars anthology film Solo, a Star Wars story. Appearances, mm. Solo, a Star Wars story <laughs> mentioned. Solo, Star Wars story Republic. adaptation mentioned. <laughs> and that's it. The High Republic should get to this. They should include that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Find out that. Legends tab has a little bit more, and this is Mother Calrissian. Was one of the parents Mother of Lando. <clears throat> you think he has brothers and sisters, Lando? Um, uh, possibly. That would be interesting. Will we ever meet the other uh, other Calrissian? <laughs> the other kid? It'll be Lando, Bando, <laughs> <laughs> Rando, <Right>. Rando, <laughs> and Evan Dando. Um, Evan <clears throat> Dando Calrissian. I really, really hope that if Disney Plus does make the Lando show uh, that they've talked about, that it is Lando's entire family trying to sue him over the Calrissian Chronicles. Of like, <laughs> that's our family name. There's ambiguity. People think that's about me, Rando, me, Mando, which was a bad name in the Star Wars galaxy to give me yeah. Mando. Right. Because I'm not. I'm from Corellia yeah. or whatever. No, wait. Where is he from? Does it say? <clears throat> the Landolorian. The gold system, we know from Rise of Skywalker. The gold oh. system? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> is that really what it's called? Oh, Socorro. Yeah. That's where he's from, Socorro. Like classy gold. I live in the gold system. <laughs> <laughs> Socorro is an astronomical like object where? located in the gold system. Well, we can't even say it's a planet because we don't know. <laughs> Maybe Lando how... comes from the bronze system, but he just tells people it's gold. Oh, yeah. Mm. The gilded <laughs> system. Um, Mother Calrissian was mentioned in uh, um, Lando Calrissian in the Flame Wind of Ocean mm -hmm. by L. Neil Smith. Uh, wind. And also mentioned in uh, uh, Star Wars number 52 from Marvel Comics in 1977, um, which has a, a great kind of uh, uh, Walt Simonson cover um, with, with Darth Vader's looking kind of like Nixon and, and the... the <laughs> <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, it, it, I, I'm, I'm interested. I can't tell if I want to see Lando's mother or not. I don't know if I want that story. <laughs> that sounds like a diss. <laughs> I don't know if I want your mother or not. Um, I wouldn't say that to Lando myself no, no, personally. No. But I can't tell. Like, I like the idea of Lando's mother. I, I really do like him saying that. I like her as an anecdotal uh, yeah. piece of character development on Lando's part. Again, not that, you know, obviously mother, women should not be just there to as character development for the male characters, but also we don't need to have everybody's family in everything. We don't need, it's like, we don't need to dig under the, all those rocks. So it might be interesting. It would have to be done well, but I don't, I, I don't know. I like the idea of her. I don't necessarily want to see her. Mm. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, well, you know what else I don't like to see? What is it? I don't like to see the handlebars of the Millennium Falcon. Oh, oh. really? Yeah, because I feel like you, I, unlike you guys, I have not been to Galaxy's Edge, so mm. I'm not like familiar. I've not seen it, but it just looks so cheap. It looks like I like the <laughs> fact that you just see Han Solo kind of moving his hands around and, you know, from the front and you never see exactly what he's doing. But when you see it, it just, I'm like, ugh. it just seems, you know, it's like, not that's a huge deal, but it's kind of like anticlimactic that it's just this little dinky thing. The, the mm. only thing that would be worse is if you see Chewie's hands. Chewie's hands doing Chewie's that fingers. handlebar would be the, the worst thing. the detailed fingers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that would be the worst combination. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of got a sharp edge. So you could see Chewie, like, really getting the grit up from under his fingernails <laughs> oh, yeah. with it. Yeah, no, I get you. I think it's, I think yeah. that's always, it's, it's not it's a, a big hard deal, thing. though. Yeah, yeah. but the, the longer you've had to imagine something, it, it yeah. it's always like, it's not, the magic is imagining it and then sometimes seeing it isn't fun. I totally get yeah. that. Uh, Although, I, kinda, I just like the design of it. It just, it looks, I don't know. I think for me, I just, I, I get so obsessed with the big ideas of Star Wars. And obviously I, I, I love the big thematic stuff, but then the yeah. other half of it is, I feel like Star Wars is uh, both profound and then utterly absurd and silly. Right. And so I, I, I personally like just getting, I, I come to Star Wars for whiplash. <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> for you go. going, that's really <laughs> deep and powerful. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a space steering wheel that you just stuck on there. And I like the whiplash personally. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it, yeah. For your for your benefit, Alex, I will say that probably by the time we see the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars, those oh. those have been replaced and it's a more um hmm. Yeah, in yeah. a weird way that made me that makes me like it less because oh i could see trying, han solo i could see han solo putting in a cheap uh you know like the bare bones uh thing like the mm. amazon basic handlebar but i feel like lando would want like a you know he would have the leather you know the, when cars <laughs> have those fancy leather grips and stuff yeah so yeah uh, yeah anyway mm. Let's, I think, in my yeah. head canon, I'm going to say that Lando has it on order and it just hasn't arrived yet. Or like he okay. just lost it and now he's, it's, oh, don't, don't pay attention to the handlebars. I'm having those replaced next week. Right. You know, like All that right. kind of a thing. So I'll buy it. All right. I'm back on board. Yeah. Okay. okay. So. <laughs> we can't let the episode end without talking about Ever. Han Solo's presumptuous ass. Mm. <clears throat> His ass. Mm. Is Get this the first time we hear the A word ass. in Star Wars? Uh, uh uh, no, because we had the big ass door in Last Jedi. At mm, least you right. are correct, sir. Congratulations, points to Joseph. Right. <laughs> uh, also, I, I I I understand the desire to move on, but if oh, you not, Google behind yeah. the scene things, there is a version of a steering wheel thing on the set. I just don't think we ever saw it in original trilogy. Oh yeah, I'm um, sure there was yeah, on the right. set. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there was something he was holding on to, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. 
because that's the thing for me and then i will i will um <laughs> move on uh i think because it really looks wheel like like i'd like that they don't turn it too much because otherwise it does look like th- right like, this looks is like actually Toonsers for the like, driving cat <laughs> tunes is a driving cat or like you know i could use just my normal video game controller on this driving game but i have the steering wheel <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right i'm done <clears throat> would it be wheel. worse right. if, if they were using a wiimote to <laughs> fly the falcon with the little nunchuck I'm trying yeah. to think it would be better if it was like a like a aircraft stick. You know what I mean? Mm. It was just a one thing as opposed Ooh. to a double handle. Would Man. that be better? When I was a kid, mm. the the marina, one of the well, I was from a beach town, so there are multiple marinas, but there was one down on the the other side of town had briefly on display, like one summer they had on display. It was basically like a uh essentially like a jet ski. So, like, you have the jet ski, which is just you sit on it and you have the thing. And then you have, like, a wave runner, which is, like, a two-seater and you, you ride it like a horse almost. You know, like like a bantha. Um, but then you also, they made it, like, a next one up, which was, like, almost like a, like a tiny boat. So, like, take, like, a dinghy and you have, like, a one seat in the front and then maybe, like, two seats behind it, essentially. Like, um, and so it was, like, a... Like a jet ski kind of engine where it sucked in the water it did that whole thing but it was a larger hull so it was almost like a like a small like a tiny boat like a like a lifeboat or like a dinghy or something like that made out of plastic but it 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 steered with that kind of exact kind of uh, the the you know joystick uh uh you know colonial viper kind of uh thing there mm. or uh, which i i was That's just totally vipers. like i want this but i was like you know 12 so i wasn't gonna get a yeah. boat <laughs> would you install this steering wheel in your car if you could? I would put that in my Toyota Yaris to feel cooler. Oh, totally. Mm. Yeah. Or or I guess you can replace it with like the, at least like a yoke thing, right? That's got like, no, it doesn't have oh, the circle yeah. going around, but just has the yeah. two handholds, almost like a Darth mm. Vader. I think oh, uh, yeah. using the boat example, I think I would do like a, like someone using an outboard motor where the steering wheel would actually be behind me, you know, like when people face forward and they're using their arm oh, yeah. to. Like a tiller? You want a tiller. Like, is that what it's called? A tiller? Yeah. When you do the. the okay. That's the what tiller's want, yeah. the, the tiller's the part that moves the rudder. Or I would go like big boat steering wheel. You know what <laughs> oh, I mean? Like yeah. ship, <laughs> uh, ship wheel kind of a thing. That, well, right. that might be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Need some of that wookie oomph. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chewbacca yeah, take this wheel. That's all I got for 64. Uh, yes. That was all I had. Um, the last thing for me, I really like that. I like that Kira is watching this, right? Because she is really <laughs> assessing uh, who Han is, and I love that she is just kind of like she Wuhan. is charmed uh, by him, uh, but yeah. also thinks he's utterly naive about the way the galaxy works. And I like the way that all all plays out in the way she's watching him. And then when he <laughs> after uh, he is called the presumptuous oss and kicked out of the seat, right. he kind of flirts with Kira by being like the. Aw, shucks. Even robots hate me. <laughs> I'm a bad little my... boy. <laughs> You're right, Han. You piss off everyone everywhere you go. <laughs> oh, certainly, have a, certainly have a way with people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, last, my last thing, actually, I forgot to point out is uh, some stats. I'm sure we've done done this earlier in the uh, series, but uh, the, the, uh, the Millennium Falcon, a YT 1300 uh, freighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, height. Anyone want to take any guesses as to how the dimensions, height and length? Three apples. Yeah, I, that's. I was thinking Hello Kitty. That's no. the only. <laughs> that's the only height I know, which is based in apples. Uh, <laughs> Seventeen hundred apples tall. <laughs> well, uh, I don't have my apple converter handy. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> twenty-five feet tall, which is seven point five eight meters, Pete. Uh, okay. Forty point eight meters long. There are 134 feet, and for those of you keeping track at home, the Enterprise, the original Enterprise is 947 feet long, so oh. you can roughly fit about seven en- Millennium Falcons uh, for the length of the uh, Enterprise. So That's a real uh, Tetris game right there. It takes right, up yeah. a lot of spaces in the in the parking lot, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I was wondering if the saucer, how the saucer... I couldn't find any stats as to the diameter of their respective saucer sections. Like if you could basically yeah. replace the Falcon, put that in the saucer section of the Enterprise. <laughs> I feel like it would be too small based on I feel like this. It would be really, yeah. really comical of like this very small head on top of the big nacelles. And <laughs> Although part of me feels part. like that happened in a comic or something. 
I feel like someone had to have drawn yeah. that at least, or <clears throat> like, oh, yeah, or photoshopped it or whatever. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's all I have for sixty four. All right, I, I've been handed an update. I was talking about the Kawasaki Jetmate, so mm. I will uh, I will go Jet buy one Mike. of those, and uh, I will. Uh, hey, you know where uh, we don't have that for sale, but you know where we do have Aww. stuff for sale? StarWarsMinute.com slash merch. You can get that, that tapestry that's behind Alex right now. You can get that there. Um, and we've got uh, other, you can get mugs, you can get, look at this here. I've got a, I've got a notebook with an Alex Robinson design. It's got two snaggletooths on it. You got, we got all kinds of stuff that you can get there. So, uh, snaggle teeth, you mean. Snaggletooths. <laughs> it's like the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um... We can snaggles uh, tooth. Snaggles tooth. There you go. Snaggles tooth. A pair of snaggles tooth. <laughs> Land El Carissian and the Snaggles Tooth. Um, <laughs> go to go to StarWarsMinute.com slash merch. You can get all that stuff and then meet us back here tomorrow for a brand new episode of Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute. Minute.